Are we awake? <laughs> good morning. Welcome to worship. It is good to see each and every one of you here today. Uh, unfortunately, we're having some internet issues, so we don't have availability for our live stream right now. Uh, we are recording, and hopefully we'll be able to get that uploaded later. So that's unfortunate for those folks who are at home right now. But uh, we're struggling, and there's no quick fix on that. I uh, just would like to bring a few things to your attention as we get started. Please note that we, following the worship today, we will have um, a financial discussion, uh, kind of laying out what the, the plan is for the year. So um, join us following uh, worship today. You can grab a cup of coffee and come on back and have a seat, and we'll have a little bit of time together. Um, next week, please note that we will have our annual meeting. Um, so that will be um, following the worship as well. I do want to just state that both of those meetings today and next week will be in the sanctuary. So just come on back right here um, for that conversation. Um, uh, and I do, we have sent out uh, electronically in the constant contact the annual report. Uh, so the whole book is right there. If you have clicked on the link, you will find it. For those who don't have easy access with that or want a hard copy, we do have a few today. Um, so just come um, find me and I'd be happy to hand one out to you. Um, we will have them next week as well. Uh, it's just when we give them out too much today, then we don't see them next week. So um, but let me know, we've got those. And also, just wanting to let you know that if you haven't noticed, we have um, a youth trip that is in the works. So we have a group of five um, uh, students, two adults, who will be planning to go to the ELCA National Youth um, Gathering this coming summer in New Orleans. It's really gonna happen. It really is this time. So we are looking forward to it. We are starting with our envelope uh, fundraiser. It's been uh, tried and true, and we appreciate the support so much um, and do look for different events um, through these next months as we get ready for it. So um, we're excited. We are excited and getting ready and planning. With that, you can find a few more in your bulletin, but let us take a deep breath in. Let it out slowly as we remind ourselves that God's presence is with us as we are gathered here with one another. Let us continue now with confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able and face the fonts. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Let us take a moment of silence for reflection. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. And by the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to invite the children to come forward. Come on up. Good morning. Good to see you on this cold, cold day. Do you get out for recess during days like this? Yeah, they push you outside no matter what, huh? Once you had to stay in. Oh, they let you out once. I gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So just a little time to get a breath of fresh air. Well, today, actually, I want to start with an experiment. You see, today in our gospel, we hear Jesus calling some disciples to follow him. So what I want is I want to see and have you stand up and face that way, please. Stand up, face that way, right over there. Okay, stay there, got it? All right, can't turn around, not yet. Are you ready? All right, follow me. Come on, follow, follow. Follow. All right, yeah. Not too bad, not too bad. It's not always easy knowing where, what you're doing though, is it? All right, and don't run into me. All right, now, turn around. Was it easy? You could do it, but could you kind of figure out where I was and what was going on? Not always. What would maybe be easier to follow me? To look at me, to see where I'm, I am and where I'm going, right? Yes, absolutely. So you could have a seat if you want again. Otherwise, I can talk to you there. But here's the deal. That is really what happens when we say repent. You see, Jesus is calling out to folks. He said, the good news is here. Believe it. Repent. Repent is turning towards where God is at work, turning towards where you see Jesus moving. And that not, is not always so easy, but that's why we have to keep repenting, because we keep on having to shift and changing directions and figuring out that God is with us and where God wants us to go. And that, my dear friends, is what we're going to be talking about today. Will you pray with me, please? Loving God, you continually call us to repent, to turn towards you and follow, because that is the life worth living. Please continue to call us and equip us to do just that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. Enjoy your time together. It's a tough act to follow. A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. 
When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew ca uh, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little farther. He saw James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Two weeks ago, we celebrated the baptism of Jesus through the lens of the Gospel of Mark. Last week, we veered over to the Gospel of John as Jesus began to gather and call his disciples. And today, we find ourselves back in the Gospel of Mark, picking up as Jesus is still dripping from the Jordan, infused with God's Spirit, has come through his trials and temptations in the wilderness, and now launching his public ministry. This is the first time we hear Jesus speak in the Gospel of Mark. And it is worth listening, as his first words are a strong call to what God is about and an invitation. The time is full, and it is now. God is right here. Repent and believe in the good news. These words are not being just shared with a friend or two. Jesus is shouting them out on the streets like with a megaphone. In fact, this is a call that goes beyond just those who um, hear Jesus in Mark's story. But it is for all people who are listening to the gospel and this invitation, including you and me. In Jesus' baptism, the heavens, we were told uh, a couple weeks ago, were torn apart. There is no longer any barriers between God and God's creation. God is on the loose in the person of Jesus. His invitation isn't a promise then of some distant hope for some day in the future. It is right now, a present reality, so everyone better brace themselves, because things are going to change. And the first action that Jesus invites us into is the, into this fullness of God, this major shift that God is making, is to repent. As one scholar put it, this verb in Greek, metanoite, is plural, it's present tense, it's active voice, imperative in mood, and recurring. Unfortunately, the original intent of this dynamic Greek word, metanoite, meaning to repent, has been so overused and misused by the church throughout history that it has lost much of its real meaning today. I mean, let's be honest, right? We often can get images of some wild-eyed preacher person pounding the pulpit and in threatening tones commanding the people to repent or else terrible judgment will fall upon you. 
Many mainline churches have backed off from even using the word because of the images it produces. Turn to God or else doom. When repentance is made to sound like a trip to the principal's office or swallowing a dose of fish oil or something, it betrays the very nature of the gospel that Jesus calls us to believe. This is not what Jesus is conveying in our gospel today with his invitation to repent. Instead, Jesus is saying that God's reign is within breathing distance. Repent. Turn around to take hold of something better than what you have now. Leave the old life behind and follow Jesus into a new life for God. Yes, this means that we have some changing to do and new directions to take. This is an invitation, though, to move towards God's future rather than our own past. To trust in a future made possible by the very grace of God. We do not have to be stuck in ways that knock the wind out of us. Jesus is bringing a new way to live that is literally a breath, God's spirit of fresh air. In Jesus, God makes it possible for us to repent. We can start again and again. Our sinfulness does not finally get the best of us. That is good news. Our sin doesn't finally blot out the future that God has in store for us. Things do not have to stay the way they are. Jesus insists that they really can't stay the way they are. And the rest of the gospel story then of Mark illustrates that point time and time again, beginning with the fishermen being called to follow Jesus that we hear today. To be honest, they didn't even apply for this job, right? Yet as Jesus calls them to repent, to turn toward a future that is committed to God in a new way, they immediately drop everything and go. And just as they are being transformed, witnessing Jesus' healing, forgiving, and boundary-breaking ministry, they in turn can bring transformation to others. Now mind you, not everyone is on board with this call to repentance. In Mark, it is the leaders of the Jerusalem temple to spend a whole lot of energy making sure that things will stay the same direction. They think everything's fine just as is. No change is necessary, thank you anyway. And because of their refusal to go beyond the status quo, they miss seeing life transforming right in front of their eyes. They miss feeling the breath of God that blows right on them as they accuse Jesus of wrongdoing while the lame pick up their mats and walk and the blind leave their begging posts to rejoin community. And the truth is, even the disciples who repent and leave everything for this new life and follow Jesus they still miss the mark too. They turn wrong directions, misunderstand the good news message, especially in the Gospel of Mark. They are portrayed as rather thick sometimes and often not understanding what Jesus is really up to and the bigger picture. Therefore, to repent, Mennonite, is a continuous action, not a once and done, It would be great if we repented and then just stayed the course with Jesus uh, practically clipping at his heels as we follow. 
But all of us know it doesn't happen that way. The best intentions still veer off course, calling for a return and repentance once again. It's easy, really, to begin questioning. Well, if we repent only to need to repent again and again, why bother repenting at all? Why keep trying to head in a direction towards which our feet don't seem to want to go? A story is told that one day a belligerent young man stormed up to Mahatma Gandhi. You have no integrity, the young man charged. Last week, I heard you say one thing. Today, you are saying something entirely different. How can you justify such vacillation? With his characteristic quietness, Gandhi paused and said, it is quite simple. I have learned something since last week. A part of the good news announced by Jesus is that repentance is a continuous action. It is ongoing. And finally, repentance is a plural verb. It is not a singular with a private request that Jesus makes to each of us, so it becomes our personal decision to follow Jesus. That's not the way it works. No, repentance makes clear that believing, trusting, taking uh, to heart the gospel is always, always a group effort. Being a Christ follower is not a solitary experience, but one that is lived best in community. Repentance is a call then to disciples of Jesus of every age, not a disciple. Therefore, my dear St. Stephens, we truly are in this together through stops and starts, one of continual repentance. This message of the good news is emphasized as it moves through the whole gospel story. As Mark tells it, the gospel ends as it begins with an invitation to repent. As the women come to the tomb, they hear the invitation of the risen Jesus for those disciples who betrayed, denied, and fled in Jesus' greatest time of need. They are once again invited to meet up with Jesus in Galilee. To repent, the freedom to change once again and embrace God's future because God and Jesus always give us, gives us the chance to begin again, always. For sure, following Jesus isn't easy. Sometimes we will get stuck and get lost, but it is the most amazing journey that we can take, and we are never alone in it. For it is God alone who captures the imagination, God alone who makes the vision of the kingdom come alive in us. Thankfully for us, it is not a one-time call. It is a lifetime pursuit and a community effort. May we continue to be seized by the good news turning in a new direction to follow Jesus into a life for God and believing and trusting that God is truly with us and for us. And with this call and invitation, perhaps we will be renewed once again in our confidence that God is working through us to care for and bless 
God's world and God's people. Amen. Let us continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promise to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom, empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea. Guide our care of oceans and all the creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your way of justice and truth. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, who cares for the suffering, care for survivors of assault and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under threat of violence, leave those living in poverty, and among us who are ill or in pain, especially Gregory, Dan and Myra, Anton, John and Maria, Ole and Oleg, and all of Ukraine, all in Gaza, and Israel, Mar Marsha, Kent, Vicky, Dick, Phil, Jerome, Jane, Hazel, Dave, Bob, and the family and friends of Sally, Sally Iverson and the family of Ron Elmer, God of grace. Receive our prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. God of resurrection and new life. As the first disciples shared the good news, empower us with this faith community to be open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace. Receive our prayer. We trust that you hear all our prayers, except now our concerns and thanksgivings. Offer silently, out loud, or in the comments of our live feed. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take this time and share Christ's peace with one another. We continue with our offering.
Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the, of the, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with your, this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. All is now ready. You may come forward as the ushers will help guide and direct you. Know that this invitation is for one and for all. This is to receive God's grace, God's love. No exceptions. No one turned away. Let us now continue in this meal.
Please stand as you are able. Receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our full food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. God's beloved.